All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today we are looking at a fig called Blue Celeste, or even just Celeste. It's a named variety of Celeste called the One that my friend, my very good friend actually, Bill, has found and named the One because this is one of the really tasty figs in his yard that has done really well for him. And he has actually spread this around to the community. He gave me this tree um, and wanted me to grow this to trial in my Celeste trial with all these different Celeste named figs that I'm trying to see which one really is the best Celeste. And he, um, you know, he spread this around to other people and actually it's been getting really good marks for flavor. It's been getting a lot of rave reviews. So for all intents and purposes, this should be a really good one to review and talk about and compare to the fig that we have actually been on this channel obsessed with called Black Celeste. And to give you a little bit of, I wanna give you guys a little bit of the background on Celeste and why we're so obsessed with this variety and talk about actually uh, some of the synonyms of Celeste and the different types of Celeste. And then we'll go into actually this particular fig here. But the reason why everyone's so obsessed with Celeste, or at least me, I don't know if the obsession is really, uh, <laughs> is really that widespread, but there, you know, there's a reason why LSU used Celeste in their breeding program. You think those people didn't know what they were doing? You know, um, do you really think that a fig that does so well in the South and does so well in rainy conditions wouldn't do well here? And you know, it has pretty much everything going for it. And the main point that I want to make is that it'll ripen a fig consistently at a high quality, which is hard to find in a rainy place. It's just hard to get in a humid environment. Um, you know, I could have the best tasting fig. Let's just say that Black Madeira, which by many respects, a lot of people would agree is really a tasty fig. But the problem with it is that I can't get it consistently very tasty because I can't get it to actually ripen here on the tree because a lot of times it'll split or a lot of times other figs will have different problems and you just never really get to enjoy many of them. Well, Celeste is the total opposite in that it'll consistently, very consistently ripen a high quality piece of fruit. And I have done many taste tests in the yard, guys, where I pick 20, 30, 40 figs on a, on a day, gather them all together. Maybe I, even sometimes I invite some friends. We taste a whole bunch of different varieties and Every single time, the best tasting fig is the one that is the most ripe. It's just a fact. The one that is the most ripe at the highest quality is going to be the best tasting fig here because we don't live in the perfect place. We just don't. We don't live in the perfect fig climate. If I lived in California, they'd all be basically perfect. If I lived in a dry place, the dry weather would make all of them almost perfect. And yes, it's been rather dry here lately, so we've been getting some really good figs. And at that point, you're almost splitting hairs. But, you know, just simply put, Celeste is really that special because it will produce the, the highest quality fruit among one of the varieties that is the most consistent. Um, so for that reason, again, it's a favorite. I made it a mission of mine to find which really is the best Celeste fig. Now onto the actual genetics of all of this, because why am I trying to find the best Celeste fig? Aren't they all the same? What is it? Is one Celeste equal to another Celeste? Well, if that were true, I wouldn't be doing this. <laughs> I wouldn't be spending all this time and money and effort to grow these different figs. I have probably 10 different types of Celeste here on the property, whether they're in the ground, in a container. Um, and I have to say that there's a thing, uh, there's a, there was a posting that was on Figs for Fun many years ago, which was really the first fig community, if anyone's not familiar, of crazy fig people who are really into this kind of thing. And they had discussed over there, John Verdick, the owner, had done some genetic testing, actually, on his Celeste trees. And the genetic testing showed that all of his Celeste figs were the same genetically. But he had noticed that he, sh he had noticed some differences in performance and which 
different celestries he preferred and said that he actually propagates from four different sources of Celeste and prefers those sources of Celeste. And so for me, I, I've just been um, amazed a little bit because this really enabled me to then think a little bit further about something called epigenetics. So if we, if I, if you and I had an identical twin and I, our identical twin, let's say, ate better than us, they exercised more than us, they slept better than us, they lived in a different environment than us, even though we shared the same genetics as them, they would show different characteristics. They would be like a, a different person than us, wouldn't they? Um, and the epigenetics, their genetics can change. Not that they have a different gene than us, but the scale on the genes themselves are like a sliding scale. And that certain genes can turn on or off or be, you know, like a light switch as an example. The light switch can be on or off, but you could have a dimmer and dim the light somewhere in between the two. So figs are no different. We're not really that different than these trees. <laughs> you guys remember what I said? Uh, do you think we're really all that different than trees, than, these, than this branch? Do you think I'm really all that different than this branch or something like that? Um, so that's really my point is that we found through genetic testing or John found through genetic testing that a lot of them are the same. And in his genetic testing, he tested figs like blue Celeste. He tested regular Celeste. Uh, he did not test black Celeste to my knowledge. But um, what this means is, because I had kind of thought of Celeste as three different varieties. I thought that there was a regular Celeste that really doesn't get very blue. And this was, you know, in the past, maybe a year or two ago. And then there was a blue Celeste, because there is a blue Celeste. There is a fig actually in the USDA's collection called Blue Celeste. That's why I called this this fig here a blue Celeste because it has bluer skin on it. And probably over time, it'll get darker blue than this, I imagine. Um, if I give it maybe more sunlight and as the tree ages and whatnot. But uh, then there's a black Celeste, which actually has a black or really, really blue skin, which is kind of like a super blue, like Pastelier or Verdone from Nikki or Vagabond. Um, I have a number of different uh, figs that actually have a truly blue skin. This fig here is more along the lines of actually like a gray. It's like a grayer fig, believe it or not. And maybe actually will turn blue, as I said, in time, but this fig has like a yellower green undertone with gray blue overtones and reddish maroon ribbing, a little bit of brown in there. And for my, for my money, this you know, color-wise, is very different than Black Celeste, but I don't think this is really all that different than any other Celeste. Um, sure, it's gonna be different. It's gonna have different epigenetics, or because of epigenetics, it's gonna show different characteristics. Probably some of them aren't gonna get this blue. Some of them will get more blue than this. Certainly ones I've grown in the past have never really gotten this blue. This is the bluest one I've gotten outside of Black Celeste, um, which is weird that we call it Black Celeste because it's really blue. But, um, so there's kind of a brief history there of why I'm growing Celeste. And of course, the, epi the genetics there, talking about the different varieties within Celeste and why we're even on this kind of mission. So now we can talk about this one. This is called the One. As I said, my friend Bill had given me this one. It's got, gotten a lot of attention. Um, this one here ripened super quick and I would have let it ripen actually a bit longer. Uh, however, the fig itself was getting eaten up by ants and I didn't want to lose it tomorrow. Um, so I had to pick it now. But the weather's been dry. It's been really warm here. And because of that warmer weather, the metabolisms of the trees are really quick. They're really fast. And the hang time of the figs is really short. They're ripening figs very quickly. But what's impressive though, is that this fig had really like a one or two day hang time. Um, maybe you could say in total it was three or four days, but uh, there was really only one day in which this fig could be damaged by anything. And I mean, 
there was one day in which rain could have gotten to it, the ants could have gotten to it, birds, squirrels, whatever it is, uh, for something wrong to happen. And that's an incredible quality. That's actually insane. There's not many figs I've ripened here with such a short hang time. And when you find something like that, it you just know it doesn't even really have to have any other good characteristics to it. Like it has a closed eye. It has really nice skin to it that allows the water to shed off of the fruit. Uh, it doesn't split. It doesn't crack. It dries easily. The shape of the fruit is really nice. All these things didn't even really need that because it just ripens like this. It just, it's done. Like that's incredible. I don't know if that's going to continue because again, it has been really warm here. The days are in the nineties. The nighttime temperatures are rather warm. So again, the metabolisms of the trees are really quick. The longer I let this ripen, the better it's going to taste. So if I can get this to dry up more on the tree, I'm going to be better off. Does this really look to me like it's any different than any other Celeste I've ever seen? No. However, looks are deceiving. Uh, what else can I say about this other than the short hang time? Again, it's been the bluest fig I've had, the bluest Celeste I've had outside of uh, Black Celeste. Um, it seems to be rather early. The leaf pattern matches Celeste. The uh, branches, even the branches of the wood, you can tell are like Celeste branches. It's weird how I could identify the branches, but they have like a, almost like a hairiness to them. Um, it's productive. Um, it needs a little bit more light actually to set the fruit buds. So you got to space the branches out. It's healthy. It doesn't have a lot of fig mosaic virus. Um, the figs actually don't form on the tree very quickly because they have a longer stem or whatever it is that's happening on the tree. I have other varieties that form figs sooner in May and June when they first form on the tree. But then this one actually forms relatively late compared to the others that I've had. Like my Hardy Chicago ripe uh, formed figs before this one. So did my Azalotto. So there's a number of trees that are forming the fruits before them, but because it ripens so quickly, it doesn't seem to really matter. Um, and we've talked a lot about that, how you could break apart the earliness of a fig or how long it takes for a fig to ripen based on how long it takes for it to form on the tree and then how long it takes actually for it to be perfectly right. Uh, so there's two different things there to kind of examine. And for whatever reason, Celeste maybe is a, is a bit forming a bit slower on the branches before it finally appears out of a dormant bud phase, I guess is what you could say, until it's finally visible on the branch. And then, um, of course, it ripens very quickly and is a early fig that ripens right alongside this year, my hardy Chicago there. The other important characteristic you'll see in pretty much every Celeste that I've noted is these flowers on the inside. You know what? Let me put down my knife really quickly. Excuse me here, guys. The flowers on the inside of the fruit don't always form properly. And this is a really great way, I think, to identify this fig. You see that there where the void of the fig is down there at the bottom? There is some whiter looking flowers. Those are flowers that didn't develop properly. And there's always a couple of those in Celeste. I don't know why that is, but it's a really great way to uh, identify Celeste and knowing that you're actually eating something like that. This to me seems actually quite dried, really super quick. How I'm amazed how quickly this ripened. All right, let's try it. It's very good. It's really good. Super high quality. Mild berry flavor. It tastes like a fig, guys. You know, I didn't expect to really be amazed by that. Um, 
The question now is really how different is that from the Black Celeste in terms of flavor? I think, I believe that Black Celeste has a, a more intense berry flavor attached to it. Um, whereas these Blue Celestes and regular Celestes that I've tried so far are just quite figgy, very sweet, um, and don't have much of that berry flavor to speak of. But it seems like Black Celeste actually has a little bit more of that. Um, and I wouldn't say it's, you know, a ton of berry flavor, that's for sure. Uh, like a Verdino del Nord or an Adriatic Fig or, um, you know, I don't know, something like that. But it's really good. I'm a fan. Obviously, how could I not? Again, what's the best tasting fig? The one that ripens at the highest quality the most consistently. And that to me uh, is like a four, 4.5 4 out of five. You know, when, when I can ripen figs like that, it's like an instant 4.5. And maybe I should change my scale because a lot of the figs this year I've been eating have been really well ripened like that. It's been pretty dry here. And I probably should adjust my scale because the bar is getting raised more and more. The more that I grow these special figs and get rid of the crappy ones, the more I'm being spoiled. And uh, you know, it's hard to differentiate, I think, between something that is really high quality and something that um, is also high quality, but has a really nice flavor to it. But for me, that's, you know, Anyone would be happy with that. You ate that, you'd be like, wow, that's, I like figs, you know, if you never had them. So anyway, guys, that is Blue Celeste, the one. It's a little bit of a talk update here in 2022 on this very special variety. If I was starting a breeding program, I would be using Celeste, trust me. So anyway, guys, thank you. We'll see you soon. Hit that subscribe button. Check out our blog, figboss.com. We actually have more information there on Celeste on the blog. We'll see you guys soon, all right? Take care.